It is time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mag Tournament. I must say I'm enjoying this game of Tattlebots will know your secrets so far. It's a it's a nice little tactical game. A lot like Shapeshifters, the um, Techno Witches aspect and the um, little secret thing adds a, adds a different sort of element that I... It, it's changed the game more than I kind of thought it would. Especially in the techno, which is so far, we haven't seen a lot of the secrets coming in, though. There's definitely these goals. A lot of the shapeshifter scenarios still have these goals that you're working towards, though, so they're not just slogs. Um, some of the more interesting ones involve, like, finding different artifacts and whatnot, uh, which is where, I, where the little chits that um, represent the different secrets actually came from. Uh, but the techno, which is things, adds a sort of randomness to the game that you don't that I haven't seen in other tactical games from, um, in terms of like chip pull or die rolling or events or anything like that. It's kind of just ingrained in the game. I'm also enjoying the bookkeeping aspect. I appreciated that about um, Space Empires 4X, which is the last game I played. Doing some bookkeeping in between, kind of having some downtime off camera that I can still be engaging with the game without necessarily having to be filming or anything like that. So we're at the start of our third turn. Everyone's made their shift choices, their transformations. And we'll start here with um, Skibby. Skibby is an oak, which I think is interesting. She just planted herself right here. Makes some sense. It's a defensive position. Seems like she'll let people come to her. Um, there's a conflagration over there, which her side seems to have the upper hand. She doesn't feel like she needs to go there. And if she moves, um, you know, then that's going to leave all these undefended uh, from uh, Tinkerbell. And what more? She shifted in. She's been using low cost stuff so she can whip out the dragon when the time comes. The dragon, if you don't know, is probably the most single most potent creature. It's right here. Got a six attack, a six defense, five initiative, decent movement, and it can breathe fire, which is non counter attackable. Pretty great. Um, so I guess we'll we'll talk about Tinkerbell next. And Tinkerbell is one of two people who morphed into a Griffin. Griffins are great too. Um, they're a lot more sustainable than dragons, especially at this form at this um, experience stage that they're on. They they re they regenerate nine every turn. Staying as a griffin only costs seven. So once you're there, you can stay there indefinitely as long as it's useful to you. But then again, someone could just be a dragon and bat you down. So she's got the griffin. That's going to give her good movement and good attack should she need it. Someone else became a griffin too. That was Jules. Jules whipped out the griffin. She's no longer trying to heal herself. She's got to do something else. Um, she's, be, she's in hot pursuit right now, or they're in, she's being hotly pursued by... Um, Chinky, sorry, I have to keep consulting my list of names. When they have a lot of like names that are something E, I don't remember them as well. I can remember Danimal very well. Um, but also because I haven't read off their personalities. And there's eight people. When there's eight people, that's also a little more difficult. So there's all that going on. Um, yeah, so she's a griffin as well. Her pursuer, Chinky, he's a cheetah which is good for a pursuer, except that they are in the woods, and the woods do take more land movement. So the griffin's going to have essentially 14 land movement, well, while in the woods, to, to Chinky's tw uh, six in the woods. And I'm, I'm doing the math wrong. So the land movement of a cheetah is 12, which is essentially halved in the forest. Um, air movement gets around that. Anyway, sorry, that was too much time spent on that. The animal... He is a rhino still. He's, he retained the rhino status. He could have moved to something maybe a little better. The rhino is not ideally suited towards the woods either because they, the rhino can't use its charge ability in woods. But he was already there, decided to stay there, needed something with good movement, decent attack. You know, maybe get some more of his energy back. Shifting generally costs more energy than staying the same thing, depending on what you shift to. Then if we look at our two combatants here... Um, whose names are Shell and Smudge. They both, uh, Smudge stayed the same. He's a giant wasp still. Um, Shell, she decided to become a Hydra, which is also very costly. Cost her 15 to get there. It's gonna cost her 10 to stay, so that's a net deficit, right? She's gonna, the longer she stays a Hydra, she's gonna just keep sapping energy. And she doesn't have a lot right now. She has three left. 
so she's only going to be able to stay there a few turns. But the upside is she's immune to everything except for fire. So unless Smudge turns into a dragon or a salamander, she is safe. Then looking over here at our dancing bear who did that nice little turn last at the end of the last session, she became a whale, which works. She ended up in the water. She decided she'd become a whale. Her intention is to come down the river and mess with this thing. Uh, unfortunately, whales don't move super fast. They only move four in the water. Nothing moves super fast in the water like they do in the air. But c'est la vie. That's what she decided, and that's going to kind of add a new element for everyone else. They're going to have to deal with some water stuff instead of kind of the other dynamic that they've been working, working with over here and over here. Jules in Griffin form was our first one to act, and she made a run right around here towards the secret box. Um, first, first known use of that that term in this game, but I think that's what I'll call them. For a while, these were going to be charging stations. I was going to do a whole thing where when they um, refill their battery, they actually draw from the surroundings, and eventually the map would fall away. But the way this is constructed, uh, it would be... I, I, I figured I would be upsetting pieces and stuff in order to take things apart. So I decided not to do that. Instead, they're just secret boxes. Um, she's not facing it, however, so she can't open it up. <laughs> That's one of the tricky things. She, she thought, or I thought, she was putting in even a little extra so she could even just run into it and then um, be able to access it on her turn but she didn't quite get there. So on her next turn, she should be able to open it up. Um, cheat a little bit. Just see, God, how could she do that? No, with that, no, that wouldn't even do it. She'd have to go like, conk, conk, conk. God, that's annoying. Maybe I won't even use that rule. That's just too annoying to have to be that fine-tuned about it. She's adjacent to it, that's good enough. I like the clunkiness of the robots, like not being able to control their facing, but let's go ahead and draw a secret chit here. I don't like these counters. It's a green shard, so that's Danimal. Danimal is going to be weakened by this, and we're going to get to learn a little bit about Danimal. So I think that means we get to look at the bottom two things. How, how did I work that out? I don't want to show you the card. Sorry, you're looking at something different than me right now. So there's three counters each. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, the bottom two. And the bottom two seem like the least um, crucial to them, so it's going to end at their unusual fact and secret fantasy, which seems like the most um, core to the character. So, Danimal, reputation in high school, Romeo. Three words that describe Danimal are American fun boy. You could have guessed those things already. You knew that about Danimal. He just, it's, it's part of his, his scent. So you know the import of what just happened. Let's look at the stat change there. So Danimal's charge, that's how much uh, battery or energy he gets every turn, goes down by two. His, his total battery capacity goes down by eight, which is huge. Right now he's at 12, so that's not going to impact him directly right away. He can only shift four spaces away instead of five, and his hit points, which does impact him right away, goes down to 14 as a max. So he is, um, he basically lost four hit points just because she went to that secret box. Now you know the power of secrets. Smudge, not being able to destroy the, or damage the Hydra, decided instead, especially since he had this, ex this prime example from Jules here, just to bypass the Hydra and shoot on over here to see what's in this secret box. And this was like a really nice route. It kind of worked exactly as I planned, so maybe I'm getting better at this. Or maybe Smudge just underestimates himself. Anyway, so he's going to be right here. Perfect. Right in front of it. Present and accounted for. Let's see whose secret we get to learn next. Ooh, Jules. Poor Jules. Jules has just been getting smacked this game. She's up with people. And maybe her her sympathy... I don't know which way she was facing. I think this way. Her sympathy has... 
caused weakness in her. So let's learn a bit about Jules. Let's learn what she was like in high school and some abbreviated ways to describe her. So her reputation in high school is most encouraging. She was spontaneous, educated, and a flirt. All right. That's a good combination. There's, a, there's some balance there to that combination. Seems like a very balanced person. I'd really love to see some of her up with people performances. Um, but there's so many people in up with people, it's difficult to just pick out one member and see what they've done. Even if I were to watch an up with people performance, I wouldn't necessarily know if Jules was in that performance because there's so many people in up with people. People. And with Skibby's bush hiding, uh, among, I guess, some other bushes. That's going to end the turn. So let's take a look at where people are. Um, our griffin here, which is Tinkerbell, she's approaching this secret box. Kind of just decided to skirt Skibby. Uh, didn't want to have to deal with... Oh, she's not a bush. She's an oak tree. Didn't want to have to deal with the oak tree. She's hiding among other oak trees. Um, we have someone at this secret box here. That's Smudge. The Hydra couldn't really move there, but no one could really attack the Hydra, so that... That allowed Dancing Bear to focus this way. He almost ran right into the secret box. He stopped just short of it. Uh, he really was hoping to hit um, here so that he could more easily attack um, Jules on the next turn. But that didn't happen. At least he didn't run into it, though. Though that would have been comical to have the, the Rhino do that. He would have ran right into it, actually, if it weren't for the movement penalty for having to go through the forest. Um, so Jules is right at the secret box. People are closing in, but she's a griffin. She can fly above them. They'll probably take to the skies on the next turn in order to counteract. She might have to decide on a new form or uh, that's more defensive or else stay as the griffin because the griffin's nice too. Um, we have a whale moving, and that's pretty much it. Time to, time to do some form shifting and um, battery level track managing. All right, we're done with the turns changes and the initiative rolls. Um, the green team, which seems to have the be on the offense right now, in, at least in terms of like overall hurting the other team, although there is a lot more blue in their territory, so there's that going on, uh, will be hindered this turn, I think, because the whole blue team all got an initiative roll of 10, um, and there's a certain way to order all of that, but um, they're all going to go right in a row, and then it's going to be the green team right in a row, essentially, is what it's going to be, which is kind of interesting. Uh, looking at the map, um, we had a swap of forms here where uh, Jules, she became a cheetah, and um, Chinky, he turned into a griffin, hoping to catch her as a griffin. They're trying to get her away from here. Her plan instead is to run down and try to make an run here uh, and get away from all of those fellows that are gradually chipping away at her hit points, or could be if they get to her, and they're very close. Um, the animal, he stayed as a rhino. Rhinos are large, so they have a chance of hitting something out of the air. They, they were thinking she was going to stay as a griffin, but she did not. Um, still, rhinos are, are not bad, and, and he's conserving his, his energy by staying as a rhino. And his energy is less now. His energy production is less because he became a sorcerer robot instead of, a, we'll say, a Mach 4 instead of a Mach 5. Um, then over here, we have this little drama going on. We kind of got four different dramas, right? So Smudge, the Ballad of Smudge and Shell. Um, I think there's a little bit of romantic tension between these two. I don't know if you think the same. Maybe you don't know their personalities like I do, so it's, it's a little trickier for you to say that. But um, he became a giant spider, and she became a griffin. So she's going to attack him. She's, she's a very attacky sort of person, and he's going to try and, and ensnare her in a web. So that should be fun. Um, the kind of unsung drama is the drama of this now manta ray, which was a, a whale, uh, dancing, dancing bear. She's going to try to get down this river as quickly as possible to access this while everyone else is tied up. And then we have the little bit going on over here, um, and it involves a dragon, our first dragon. Dragons cost a lot to become a dragon. Costs 19 to get there and 12 to stay as a dragon. Um, but 
Skibby's been very frugal with her energy so far. So she tur she became a dragon. She's about to try to wallop um, Tinkerbell over here, who's still a griffin, and is going to try to access this box this turn. Although seeing a dragon there might change her mind. She can out run a dragon if she has a lead, but it kind of depends on where she is on the map. They have the same air movement rate. Jules is going first, and she did her cheetah run. Shoo, barely made it through, kind of ran off the board and then back on again. So we're going to roll to see who's, um, which is the category we're looking for. Who's unusual fact we get to learn. All right, so we'll go one, two, three, four, and we roll five or six. Three. So Chinky's unusual fact is he saved a person from a burning car. Chinky is a hero, but that makes him more human. Shell's turn, and she's in round two with Shell versus Smudge. This time it's at the secret box. All right, so Shell gets to attack first. She's got a three against Smudge's two, so that's going to be a one. She's probably going to damage him, and that's two damage on Smudge, and then Smudge is going to counterattack. He's got a straight up d6 roll. If he gets four or higher, um, Shell is trapped in a web. And he did, so she he has webbed her. He's ensnared her. Ooh. Tinkerbell has just revealed Smudge's soul gem. So that's going to take him down some power, which is too bad because he was doing well for himself uh, for the most part. Um, so let's take a look at his reputation in high school. Least likely to survive senior year, and three words that describe him are birth control poster child. So he has some self-esteem issues. That's what I've concluded about Smudge. Um, his name being Smudge, yeah. he kind of feels bad about himself. You can kind of see that there, and that's not something robots feel. And so she has damaged Smudge. Uh, see, he's already at 14 because he just got hit. So, so on the bright side, the damage Shell just did to him uh, didn't really affect anything because he um, was already, he would have been brought down to 14 by becoming a Mach 4 over Mach 5. Having imprisoned Shell in a web, Smudge is about to reveal another secret. This one belongs to Dancing Bear. Let's find out about Dancing Bear in high school. She was studious, motivated, considerate, and musical. Well, right now she's motivated, considerate, and musical, but in high school she was considered to be studious. So Skibby's dragon um, ran right into the secret box, so she has to take a, an attack against her speed of seven. Um, Defensive for the dragon is six, I think, so it's not too bad for her. Yeah, so she's not going to get that much damage. And she can attack from a hex away, so she's still going to be able to blow fire at uh, the griffin there, Tinkerbell. So attack a one, two damage for Skibby. I'm just going to make a note of that with my less dominant hand. And then we'll go ahead and go right into the combat. So now she's going six against two. It's a fire attack. Um, Griffin can't counterattack this because it's too far away. All right, six against two, that's four, five, five damage to Tinkerbell. Youch! Turns in, we see Chinky coming down to protect um, the hub, the secret hub, and Danimal has uh, charged right into the water, his rhino, in order to protect the secret box from um, um, dancing there. There's that going on over there. There's this going on over here. We'll see what happens next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Tattlebots, we'll know your secrets.